Hello, everyone. I'm Zhan from ICT Cas.、Uh, my topic is HPC AI 500, the methodology tool and the metrics for benchmarking HPC AI systems. Here is my outline. I will first introduce the challenges of HPC AI benchmarking, then the methodology, metrics, and the specification, and finally the ranking. The first challenge is how to achieve both representative and simple, which essential properties the past successful benchmark establish. On the one hand, the spec CPU, PASIC, and TPC benchmarks emphasize the importance of benchmarks being representative and diverse, as no single benchmark or metrics measures the performance of computer systems on all applications. On the other hand. Top 500 establish the de facto supercomputer benchmark in terms of simplicity. Simplicity has three implications. First, the benchmark is easy to port to a new system or architecture. Second, the benchmarking cost is affordable for measuring system at scale. Third, the number the number of, of the metric is not only linear, but also easily understandable. In the AI domain, there are massive AI tasks and models with different performance metrics. For example, by far the most comprehensive and representative AI benchmark suite, AIBench, contains 19 AI tasks. It is not affordable to implement so many massive benchmarks and further perform benchmarking at scale. So. How to decide the representative and simple benchmarks that can measure the HPC AI system fairly and objectively? The micro benchmark HPL AI evaluates the performance of the HPC AI system based on mixed precision area decomposition. As we see, the kernel function breakdown of the 19 AI workloads from the bench console AI bench. Indicating the LU decomposition is irrelevant to all the AI workloads. This also implies that it is difficult to have both representative and simplicity. Although HPL AI is easy to test,、uh, its core its core workload LU decomposition cannot cover the characteristics. Of AI workloads and cannot provide the information of model quality. The second challenge is how to achieve repeatability. The benchmark maintains being repeatable, while AI's nature is stochastic, allowing multiple different but equally valid solutions. Previous work, such as MPOF, manifests AI's uncertainty by round-to-round -round variation in terms of epochs quality, and the effect of scaling training on time to quality. Here, I list I list some sources of this randomness. For example, random seeds affect model initialization, data travels order order. And、uh, AI frameworks use different implementations of operators, such as convolution, and multiple hyperparameters, such as batch size, learning rate, and weight decay. This slide shows the randomness of AI workloads. Image to text, which is a workload in AI bench, varies significantly. In terms of epoch to quality, under different random seeds. The third challenge is the inadequacy of micro benchmarks. The first limitation is no information of model quality can be provided. Second, the performance of the operator is determined by the input size of the kernel. Taking convolution as an example, there are not only MCHW of the input mat in, input image, but also hyperparameters related to convolution, such as the convolution step. The huge input space of the kernel makes the benchmarking cost prohibitively. Third, an AI workload usually consists of thousands of kernels with dependency. A single a single kernel, such as LU decomposition, 
cannot reflect overall overall performance. Finally, some optimization on the kernel improves flops flops, but but reduce model quality. As shown in example three, the mixed precision, which is a common optimization, indeed improves the flops but uh, reduces the model quality, especially when the scale of the system under test under test becomes larger. The model quality of eight eight nodes has reduced one one dot four per percentage. Firstly, I will introduce how we construct the workloads of HPC 500 and the mentioned challenges. The chosen workloads should be representative, repeatable, and simple. Moreover, we also consider the ad additional requirements in the HPC field. We choose AI bench training, by far the most comprehensive benchmarks as the starting point for the design and the implementation. So how to achieve representativeness? We achieve the representativeness from microarchitecture dependent and microarchitecture independent perspectives. First, from the microarchitecture dependent perspective, we choose five microarchitectural metrics to profile the computation and the memory access patterns of air batch training including achieved occupancy, IPC efficiency, GLD efficiency, GST efficiency, and DRAM utilization. For GPU system, each GPU architecture contains multiple streaming multiprocessors. Each multiprocessor has a certain number of CUDA cores, registers, caches, and warp schedulers. Achieved occupancy represents the ratio of the average active warps per cycle to the maximum number of warps provided by a multiprocessor. IPC efficiency indicates the ratio of the executed instruction per cycle to the theoretical number. GLD efficiency and GST efficiency represent the ratio of requested global memory load store throughput to required global memory load store throughput respectively. We provide the above five metrics and perform k-means clustering on all 19 benchmarks of airband training to explore their similar similarities through our GPU exper experiments. We further use the TSC for visualization, a di dimension re reduction technique to reduce high-dimensional data in a low-dimensional space for visualization. This figure shows the results. The x-axis and the y-axis are the Euclidean's, Euclidean spaces, space position after using TSE to process the above five metrics. We find that this 19 benchmarks are clustered into three classes. Second, I will introduce how to achieve repeatability. Repeatability refers to the variation in repeat measurements. Different ROMs instead of different epochs using the same benchmark implementation under the same configurations, made on the same system on the test, a good benchmark must be repeatable. Thus, repeatability is another critical condition to select the workloads for the benchmarks. However, AI's nature is stochastic due to the random seed, such as run random data traversal. It is hard to avoid. Thus, most AI benchmarks exhibit round-to-round -round variation, even using the same benchmark implementation on the same system. Therefore, we need to ensure repeatability by choosing relatively stable workloads in, vi in various AI tasks. We perform repeatability analysis using all workloads of AI bench on a GPU system 
to eliminate the influence of randomness as much as possible. We fix the hyperparameters for each benchmark, I, it, such as batch size, landing rate, optimizer, and re, repeat at least four times for each benchmark to measure the route run variation. Note that our evaluation uses the random seed and doesn't fix the initial seed except, except speech recognition. We use the coefficient of variation. Uh, the standard deviation ratio to the mean of the training epochs to achieve a target quality to rep rep represent the round to round variation. Uh, this table presents the round to round variation of 19 workloads of AI bench as we see. Each AI benchmark varies widely in terms of round to round variation. According to the table, the most random workloads are video prediction, text text summarization, and image to text, and their variations reach 38 per percentage, uh, 24 and uh, 23 respectively for speech recognition. Even sharing the same initial seed, the round to round variation still gets. 12, 12.08 percentage in contrast, object detection, image classification, and learning to rank are the three most repeatable workloads, and the variation is 0, uh, 1.12 percentage and 1.9 percentage respectively. These three workloads are consistently classified into three classes based on both the microarchitecture dependent and microarchitecture independent approaches overall image classification learn to rank and ob object detection achieve both represent representativeness and repeatability next is keep the benchmark simple simplicity is another important criteria for benchmarking however Benchmarking entire training session of all 19 workloads in airband training is, is extremely expensive, which reaches up to 10 days. We emphasize that image classification, object detection, and learning to rank achieve not only representativeness and repeatability, but also simplicity. And then is the requirements in the HPC field. First is the data set. Against other domain AI benchmarks, there are two unique differences in HPC AI benchmarking. First, the challenges of, of HPC AI benchmarking inherent from the com com complexity of uh, benchmarking scalable hardware and software system at scale, such as tens of thousands of nodes, significantly different from that of IoT or data center. On this point, we need to make the benchmark as simple as possible, which we have discussed in detail before. Third is the data set. As HPCI domains co cover both commercial and high-performance scientific computing, currently business applications are pervasive. AI for science Applications lack but is promising. In general, the scientific data are often more complicated than that of the commercial data, such as minutes or image data, image net data. The second point in the requirements of the HPC field is the computation complexity. Uh, as, as shown in the table, learning to run is, is too low in terms of flops, and therefore it is not suitable for HPC AI benchmarking. So, image classification and object detection are chosen as two typical workloads for HPC AI benchmarking. Based on the existing analysis, we can conclude that image classification and object detection are the final candidates to construct the HPC AI 500 benchmark. We choose the most representative workloads and datasets from both HPC and commercial fields. The first workload is extreme weather analysis, EWA for short. 
EW is the pioneering works that uses deep learning to tackle the classical HPC problem. It win it won the Golden Bell Prize in SC eighteen. It it essentially is an object detection task. And the second workload is the image classification. Image classification is a de facto HPC AI benchmark used in many state-of-the-art works. Next, I will introduce the hierarchical benchmarking methodology. The hierarchical benchmarking methodology based on a nine-layer system abstraction. Uh, this abstraction divide, uh, divides the system under test into nine independent layers and put each other, and put each layer under test while keeping the other layers intact unless otherwise stated layer one is the hardware such as cpus and networks layers two and layer three are the related system software including the operating system and the communication libraries layer layer four includes the ai accelerators such as gpu and the interconnections such as NVLink and the libraries such as CUDA. Layer 5 refers to the AI framework such as TensorFlow and PyTorch. Layer 6 refers to the programming model. Layer 7 refers to the workloads used in HPCI benchmark. Layer 8 refers to hyperparameters. Layer 9 refers to the problem domain. At the limited time, uh, we can, you can find more de details in our technical report on the Bench Council website or the archive. Then I will introduce the metrics. We propose valid flows to quantify the valid performance that considers both the system throughput and the model quality. The goal of this metric is to impose a pen penalty on failing to achieve the Target quality. Valid flows is calculated according to the formulas 1 and 2. The, pen the penalty coefficient is used to penalize or award the flows if the achieved quality is lower or greater than the target quality. Its, it's, a de its definition is described as a formula 2. Achieved quality refers to achieved quality in the evaluation. Target quality refers to a target quality defined in the problem domain. The value of n is a positive integer, which is used to define the sensitivity to the model quality. The higher the number of n, the more less the more loss of quality drop, as EWS has much more stringent quality requirement than that of image classification. We set n as 10 for EWA and 5 for image classification. By default. Next is the specification of the HPCI 500 benchmark. There are two problem domains in HPCI 500. The first is extreme weather analysis. Its data is made up of 26 year climate data, and the data have 16 channels and a very high resolution. The second problem, the second problem domain is the image classification, and the adopted data set is ImageNet 2012, and it's a very famous data set, and the adopted model, namely are faster RCN and the rest of the 50. Here is a summary of the HPC 500 benchmark suite, and. Uh, we use TensorFlow and Orwell to implement the reference implementation. Finally, I will introduce the ranking based on HPCI 500. We also report some auxiliary metrics such as training time and the model quality. As we see, Google and Facebook achieve the highest model quality. 
although the Fujusi has only seven seventy five dot one top top one accuracy, but it has the highest valid flows. Finally, I will introduce the influence of the HPC five hundred. It is the fourth HPC benchmark based on scientific application and data set and it has been listed as a key reference by Jack Dongor, who is the founder of Top, 5, top 500. And, uh, this is, and this, these two links are our official website and a technical report. My presentation ends here. Thank you for listening.